I'm a skeptic about the ISON comet, and I have a couple of questions. Why should I or anybody care if this comet is circling the sun and it's going to increase radiation on Earth? You know, that's a great question, and I've asked myself that. Knowing about some renewable energy and the electric universe, uh, I believe our fragile electrical grid is not as protected as it could be, and that some yeah, geomagnetic storm could have some electrical disturbance on our planet. It depends if that radiation is accompanied by electricity as well. All right, the last time, a big one to look up that's proven. We can go to Google as the Carrington event in 1859, and that happened in Michigan, right? Well, it actually happened in far more places than that. Yeah, so let's step back to the 1859 Carrington event. It actually occurred in September, and it was far uh, wider yeah, ranging than, than you've just said. It was not just in one single location. So what happened? Well, let's compare 1860s telegraph lines, the chunky, huge iron devices that clicked a wire. Da, 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 da. Let's compare it to something like our iPads or Mac Air. How, what's the fragility of that? That was an incredibly hefty system at that time. And the basic answer to that is our lifestyle is so based on this fragile electrical grid, it's not protected from what you're talking about, increased radiation or electrical pulses from the sun. If it's all connected to the grid... For how long? Well, how long would it be during a typhoon or a hurricane? And how long does it take to repair all that before your electricity is restored? At the minimum, you could expect that. Do you have a refrigerator? I do. If it stops, what do you do at that point? And it would stop because of an electrical surge? That's right. Now, if you notice when power surges come, it's a trip event. So it's not exactly the entire grid's affected, but it starts in one place and spreads to the rest of the grid. So even if you're hundreds of miles away and an electrical event happens because of a large solar flare concentrating someplace on the planet that supplies you with electricity, yours goes out, even if you're hundreds of miles away. Now, you're saying that this happened in 1859, and it was caused by the electrical universe theory, EUT? Uh, we call it EU. It's the electric universe theory, of course. Uh, comets are electric. They're almost cosmic capacitors. They interact with the sun electrically. I mean, gravity's part, yes, but electrical connection as well. And also the sun reacting with comets electrically to cause more coronal mass ejections. All right, so you're basing all of your projections and warnings on something called the Carrington event. The world's largest geomagnetic storm that was measured by modern instruments. Right. And what, what was the effect of the telegraph lines during that time? It melted them? It nope. didn't melt as in turn them into liquid, but they all caught on fire. They caught the poles on them that were on fire. And also at the stations where they have that really clunky, duh, 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 like pieces of metal, sparks were flying out a meter, three, four feet out of where they actually put the signal in and burned some of the operators because the sparks were but coming out that, that far. Where did that happen? In the United States and in Europe, both. Station would catch on fire at that time, but what about the electrical devices we have in our house now? What about those main currents that are coming back in? What if each one of those starts to shoot out of flame? At least the plastic covering will catch on fire in your house. All right, so what should we do? Unplug the refrigerator? Unplug the microwave? Because this is in the air. This is not coming just across electrical wires, right? That's right. It's in both. But you could actually cut yourself off from the house if you turned off the power going into your house and actually disconnected that grid with no physical connection to it so there was literally a fire break between your house and the grid that would give you some time but you're right electric universe theory talks about there's electrical plasma in all space and all we have to do is draw that energy out of space itself nikola tesla talked about this in 1880s 1890s if you're seeing red auroras in cuba Everything else north in Ohio and around to New York, is their instrumentation is being destroyed. All right, you began by asking me, do I have a refrigerator? So I should unplug my refrigerator. I certainly want to unplug my high-priced computer. I mean, really, we're just, we'll are just we have to ride this out, won't we? You do have to be disconnected from the electrical grid somehow. The plasma charge is actually in the air itself. 
it's not only from the sun. The Everything around you is plasma. You live in a universe that's full, complete. It's 99.9% energy itself that's vibrating faster because the comet's electrically connected to the sun. And those electrons and protons are more highly charged. There's more of them coming at us, and we get more highly charged. And that affects the electrical systems. Things can be plugged in. Or they can be not plugged in. Which one? If you have a lightning strike on your house, would you want your computer plugged in the wall where there's way extra electricity coming in your house through those? You didn't want it to, but it got hit by lightning, so everything got overcharged. Bzz. Do you want your things plugged in during a lightning storm that gets hit by, or do you want them unplugged? I want them unplugged. Why don't people know about this? Why, why isn't this as big a deal as the uh, news portrays it to be? <laughs> or the 2000, what was that called? Where the computers weren't going to work? Y2K. Y2K. Yeah, why Why isn't there as much panic or as much worry about this as Y2K? This one's real. Why isn't, why isn't there media reports everywhere and warnings? Well, it has been spoken about on some of the news channels, especially I like this Brian Williams clip. It was about 45 seconds. I think he says, there's a big, bright, brilliant comet coming in November... You may want to stock up on snacks and beverages. Was that a subliminal way to tell people? But you're, you're saying that what happened, the Carrington event, could happen again in a much greater degree in November, December of 2013. And to prove your point, you're saying it's already begun. In October 19th through the 21st, there were some events that happened on the Earth because of the comet Ison. That's correct. There was a T-junction between Mars, Comet Ison, and Earth that also connected back to the Sun. Now, I was saying that because it's an electrical universe that the Sun is pulling to Comet Ison out to space, that these Birkeland currents would be more electrified and there would be but some did, electrical no, disturbance. No I predicted more earthquakes during that time. You can't tell me that November 19th through November 21st, the Internet went down in the Northeast United States. And November 19th through November 21st, when I predicted, and the orbital diagrams, they show that the connection was there mathematically. So what's the coincidence of these mathematical probabilities happening that overlap in time, the 19th to the 21st?